Given a collection of rocks, each rock contains a positive integer value as its weight. Each turn, we take the two heaviest rocks and smash them, and only the remaining weight stays. Return the last value in this array after we're smashing all of the possible rocks. How would you do that? That's about today's video. Let's dive in. San Francisco Bay Area, or Silicon Valley. This is where my dream started. Hi everyone, this is Steve here. Today we're going through legal code problem 1046, last stone weight. Let's take a look at the problem des description first. We have a collection of rocks. Each rock has a positive integer weight. Each turn, we choose the two heaviest rocks and smash them together. Suppose the stones have weights x and y with x smaller than or equal to y. The result of this smash is if x equals to y, both stones are totally destroyed, meaning there is no weight remaining. If x is not equal to y, the stone of weight x is totally destroyed and the stone of weight y has new weight, y minus x, basically the difference between the two weights. At the end, there is at most, and most, there is at most one stone left, because all of the other stocks, and all of the other rocks have been smashed into like dust, nothing. There's no weight anymore. Return the weight of this stone, all zero if there are no stones left. Let's just quickly go through this given example, then we'll have a better understanding. And 274181, output is 1. As the problem says, we always choose the two heaviest rocks. The two heaviest rocks in this case is 7 and 8 um, right now. So we smash 7 and 8 together. So this array, and the, the difference is only 1. So we add one more 1 into this array. So this array becomes this. And then we'll continue to do this. 2 and 4 will be the next two biggest one, then 2 and 4. And the difference is 2. So there is one more 2 here. Then we'll continue to do this. The next two different will be two and one. And the remaining difference is one. So there's one here. Then we'll keep doing this. And there are three twos. We'll pick two of the um, two of the three ones here. Then they are just completely equally destroyed. And there's only one remaining. And that's the result that we're going to return. Very simple problem, I would say. The very natural idea that comes into mind is basically use a priority queue, which is going to um, always uh, in this case, it's going to be a max heap, which meaning every time we pull from the heap is going to give us the max um, element in this in um, this current heap. And then we'll just keep pulling. We'll keep uh, we'll pull twice because we'll smash the two biggest elements. And then we'll just uh, add the difference. If there is any difference, if there is none difference, it's just uh, zero. We'll just uh, add the difference back into the heap. We'll keep doing this until there is no more two elements, no more than one element in this max heap. Then we'll just return. That's it. That's the idea. Let's just start running code then. Use a priority queue, and we just uh, keep pulling. Uh, we'll, we'll put all of them, construct the max heap in the first step, and then second. Um, after that, we'll just keep pulling twice. And before we keep pulling twice, we'll ch check whether this array um, has two elements at least. If it doesn't, we'll just return the uh, final element. That's it. Priority Q integer, we'll call it max heap, new priority Q integer, integer, yeah. And here we need to implement a customized comparator, which is going to reverse the order. Because by default is in ascending order, but we want in descending order. So we we'll just uh, quickly implement the customized uh, comparator for this um, priority queue, and then we we'll just uh, put every every uh, stone into the weight of every single stone into this max heap max heap uh, offer number. That's it. After this step, we have built this max heap, and then. What we'll do is while max heap is not empty, we'll just keep pulling. We have a check, we have a while loop here. As long as the max heap is not empty, and then we'll also check if the max heap size is at least two, right? Otherwise, we cannot pull two rocks to smash them. Max heap size 
it size is greater than or equal to two, then we'll just uh, um, pull it. Uh, we can just uh, put them together. It's very straightforward. There's nothing too fancy or tricky. Max heap. First pull, we're going to get the current biggest element. And then this one is bigger than the... So after we pull the big the biggest one out, the next biggest one is becoming is sitting at the root of the max heap. Then we we'll just keep pulling max heap, pull it again. So this is basically the biggest element minus the second biggest element. Then we'll just add that um, add the difference back into the max heap. That's it. Um, else we'll just return else means max heap. Um, so first we have max keep is not empty and then we have max keep size is greater than or equal to two and the only else condition is there is only one element in this max keep so in that case we're just going to return max keep uh, pull pull that's it to make it compile we'll just return minus one we can return minus anything because this one is guaranteed to have a solution that's the beauty of lead code yeah that's it we we'll just hit submit and see all right, accept it. That's the algorithm. First, we view the priority queue by iterating through every single element to put them into the max heap. And after we uh, construct the max heap, we'll just keep pulling. Every time we keep pulling two elements, if there are more than two elements in this max heap, max heap and then we add the difference of these two max value back into the heap. So now let's talk about the time complexity and space complexity of this algorithm. Uh, remember, we're taking advantage of priority queue. This is going to give us log in um, operation time. Remember, we went through this priority queue Java Docker uh, maybe a few weeks ago. Let's just actually a priori uh, look it up again. Priority queue Java Doc. We'll see. Let's look at the latest implementation. I hope you guys can see my screen. Let's let me zoom in. So here, this is the priority queue Java doc. Uh, let's go through this again. Uh, well, the only thing that we care about right now is this implementation. Though this implementation provides O log n time for the in queuing and de queuing methods, offer and pull. These are the two APIs that we used, right? These are the two APIs, offer and pull. So these operations are going to cost log n time. That's why I said the time complexity is O n log n. That's where this log n is coming from. And where does this n come from? This n comes from n is the number of um, integers in this given array. Why? Because um, we have to traverse through, say there is a for loop here. We have to go through, we have to visit every single element in this array. To, for every single element, we need to do this operation. So it's a multi multiplication. So it's n log n time. That's the time complexity. I hope we're all on the same page. That makes sense to you. And space complexity. Space complexity is going to be O n. Because after this for loop, we have added all of the elements into this max heap, which contains the entire size of this array. Right? That's why the space complexity is going to be O N. Um, I hope this um, everything makes sense to you. And that's about the time and space complexity for this problem. And its priority queue is pretty efficient, which gives us lock, lock in for a lot of its operations. And after we go through the time complexity, I just would like to quickly mention, I see um, on Discuss board there is some confusion about whether we need to add, if these two rocks, the two biggest, uh, uh, the the two rocks that we take out with the current biggest uh, weights. Uh, what if the weights are two? The two weights are equal, say uh, two um, rocks with um, values, both of them with value two or with value three. After they smash, there is going to be none. And the zero value is going to be added into this heap, right? See here, if two minus two is going to be zero, and we add a zero into this max heap, is that going to make a difference, or is this algorithm correct or wrong? In that case, uh, we'll just use a simple example to go through that. Say we have one, one, and two, and three, three. So we have we have given five a collection of five rocks, and so every time we take out the two biggest elements and smash them. 
So for the first time, we're going to result in three, uh, one, one, two, zero, right? That we take out the first in the first algorithm with our current implementation, we're going to add the zero back into the max heap. And this is how it's how it's going to work. Let's take a look. So uh, first time we take out two threes and they smashed, they got smashed and we add a zero back into the max heap. And the next time we take out one and two, right? These two are the next uh, biggest elements. It's, it's becoming, and the remaining one is one. So it's becoming something like this. And then we'll continue to take the next two biggest elements, which is one and one, which uh, they smashed equally together. So we add a one into this. And finally, we, we are just ending with zero, zero. It's still two elements, so we take the these two elements out, and its result is just a one. So there is there is always, we are ending up with at most one element in this max heap. In this case, we just return zero here, right? So this, this, uh, this walkthrough is, is what's going to happen if we are passing in this test case for the current uh, for the current implementation, which is we are adding the zero into the queue. But it, just in case, if you don't want to add a zero into the max heap, which is also going to work, that's fine too. So see here, uh, we're given the the same collection of rocks. First, we take we take out the two biggest elements, three and three, one, one, uh, two. These th two threes are smashed together. They are just gone, destroyed, totally destroyed. So we don't add the zero back into the max heap. So we'll start the next iteration from this max heap. And then from here, we'll take out the next two biggest elements, which is one and two. Then the difference is one. So we get a one and one. This one comes from the difference of the last two biggest elements, right? So this is the uh, the current one that we're going to go through for the next iteration. Then we take out the t next two biggest elements, which is one and one, smash them together, which is ending in the zero. So we we just pop out and return this zero. And the code just needs to be slightly modified. So here uh, we check if the difference after subtracting the, uh, smashing the two biggest rocks, if it's zero, we're not going to add that back into the max key and also we'll check whether the max heap is empty already. If it's empty, we'll just break out and return the difference. That's whether it's zero or any other number. That's that's going to be the last value, that one last stone that's left. That's it. So either add or don't add zero back into the max heap. Uh, we just need to tweak the code a little bit. Either way it works. That's about it for this problem. I hope you guys learned something from this. And uh, if there is any comments, feedback, questions, just leave me down in the comment section below. I would really appreciate it. And do me a favor and uh, tap the like button and subscribe to my channel, please. That's going to uh, mean a lot to me and help my channel to grow. I would really appreciate it. And tap the bell notification so that every time I publish a new video, you're not going to miss out on anything.